It's the king of low light, the Sony VX2100. Can it hold a candle to modern day cameras in low light? We're going to test it. How does it do outdoors in bright light? We're going to test it with our model Olivia. We're going to look at the controls and the features of this wonderful piece of equipment. This one really is a tech to remember. And that's coming up right now. So I bought this VX2100 on eBay and it came in the original box, an attractive blue and cardboard looking box prominently showing the 2.5 inch flip out LCD screen. Inside the box, a lot of different compartments with the instructions and paperwork on top. Mini DV tape included, which is nice, and AV wires, also nice. The battery charger and AC cable right here. And the battery itself is a one of those large, beefy NP batteries, which gives you hours and hours of recording time. These cameras have no recording limits, no overheating, actually an improvement over today's cameras. A wireless remote, another improvement. You don't need any apps or anything. You just put the batteries in the remote and you're done you, and you can control all functions. And here actually is a wired remote that came with the camera, a very beefy looking one with a display. This is goes right into the LANC port, which we'll show you later. And the camera itself in the classic Sony ribbed paper packaging. VX2100 is a successor to the VX2000. This VX2100 is a dark aluminum, what Apple would call like a space gray, whereas the VX2000 was a bright silver color. And that really was the only major difference. So what exactly did they improve in the VX2100 over the VX2000? Sony claims that there were still some improvements in low light. Now, Video Maker reviewed the camera and found very little difference. And I think most people also found that there was very little, if any, improvement in low light because the VX2000 was just so excellent in low light. So then why did Sony come out with this camera if it was so similar to the VX2000? Well, it seems like they did it just for the sake that people wanted something new and they just had to do something. So it was just time for a refresh. Now here's some actual footage that I shot with this camera about 15 years ago. And you can see how clean it is in low light situations. On video, the room actually looks brighter than it really was. This camera really could see in the dark. These small three chip mini DV camcorders really started a revolution in event videography because prior to them, videographers would have to lug around these large, big cameras, three chip cameras that weighed 15, 20 pounds with lights and it was really a hassle. When these smaller prosumer cameras came out, as they were called, they basically did the job, if not better. The only problem was some event videographers felt a little weird carrying such a small camera. Well, small by today's standards, it's not small, but back then, this was tiny. They felt that the client might think, oh, what kind of hobbyist is this guy? This isn't a real professional, but in the end, I think the clients really appreciated the smaller cameras because you were less obtrusive, you were less in people's faces, and you could sort of blend into the background. So one of the first things that you see about this camera is the large lens and how you access it with this lever on the bayonet mount, which is very cool. You don't have this lens cap dangling. It's not automatic when you turn the camera on. You do have to press this switch, but it's still all self-contained, which is very nice. The other thing very unique to this camera too is the built-in two selection neutral density filter. There's two rings on the camera, one for manual zoom and one for manual focus. Uh, there's also many ways to zoom on this camera. There's a rocker switch and there's another switch right on the lever and it's a variable speed zoom as well. Slow, faster, faster. The camera advertises right on the barrel of 48 times digital zoom. Now let's take a look and see if this is really any good. I'm actually kind of surprised a camera like this would have a feature as silly as this. I mean, you can't even hold it steady and it looks like crap. You've got the big rubber eyepiece, uh, which helps if there's bright sun. The viewfinder itself is in color. 
it's relatively clear. And when you're making manual adjustments like to exposure and using the wheel to adjust, you can see that update in real time inside the viewfinder. And of course, you have the pullout screen, which by the way, does fully articulate, which is something that's pretty cool. Now, I don't think you're gonna be using this camera for selfies or for vlogging, but if you're doing an interview style setup, this screen will help you frame and you won't need an external monitor. If you can see it from far away, because it is kind of small. And can you vlog with this camera well? I guess it's possible, but my arm feels like it's about to fall off actually. Okay, so let's take a look and see how this camera actually does in low light compared to modern technology. It's the king of low light, the Sony VX2100. Or is it? This is actually the Sony Alpha One, the latest Sony mirrorless digital 8K camera, full frame sensor with the newest low light improvements to the chip. This is ISO 6400. Switching back now to the VHX2100, you see the focus is locked in, whereas the Alpha One was going in and out of focus. The color saturation is also better on this 2100 as it's not wildly oversaturated like it is on the Alpha One. And you can also see a little more detail in the background on the VX2100. A little more noise too, but I think overall the VX2100 is holding its own at this ISO. We are shooting literally at one lux with one candle about one foot away. And this is at ISO 10,000 on the Sony Alpha One. This is at ISO 12,800. This is at ISO 16,000. This is at ISO 25,600. This is at ISO 32,000. So you can clearly see after pushing the ISO up on the Sony Alpha One, it's much brighter and you can see way more detail and less noisy than the VX2100. But considering the age of the 2100, still not bad. This was due in large part to the three CCDs that were inside the VX2100, three one third inch sensors, which helped improve signal to noise ratio, dynamic range, color, and sharpness. Now let's take the camera to the streets and see how well these sensors can do. Here's our model Olivia in mixed lighting. And you can see that she's coming in and out of the sun, which normally might be a problem for a lot of cameras, but the VX2100 is handling it well. Here she's on the phone, and it makes sense because she's standing right in front of the telephone building. In this next scene, she's a little nervous how the camera's gonna do in this lighting with the sun right on her hair, but she really shouldn't panic because the store says not to. And for the last dad joke, I'm sorry, here she is walking in front of the pretty girl store because she is a pretty girl. Out in the bright sunlight, the camera is handling the flare very controlled to make this scene rather pleasing. Continuing our testing, we are now off to the park and the camera is signaling that the neutral density filter should be engaged. And so I engage it to position two and you can see it actually sharpens up the image. This is the mini DV format, but it's still standard definition as opposed to the Sony's Alpha One rendition of the same scene in high definition. Always good to get perspective then and now. We're going to engage the fastest zoom speed. Gives you an idea of the stabilization. They have a bright shirt on. So I can see it's flaring a little bit in the view. Full telly. Coming back slowly. Give you an idea of the zoom power. So I think this is what they used to call walking the plank. I showed you some footage of the VX2100 in low light and out in the street. So here's some scenes in a park. So you're gonna get a wide variety of test footage to see how well the camera does. I think the colors look pleasing. We're also gonna take a look now at uh, some autofocus shots and see how well the focus does. And it did surprisingly well. Here I am, the duck is not that far away but it did miss right here. So it's not perfect. 
uh, it just did not lock on to the duck's face. Um, I'm not sure if it was because of the distance I was from the duck, but I don't think so, because after I pulled back and then zoomed in again, which I'm gonna do in a second, uh, it did focus, so that was just a miss. But no, I don't think that is it, because it is focusing on its feathers right there. So it just didn't catch its face. Here, put this duck. There was no animal eye detect back in 2000. But you see the nice background blur when you're at full zoom. And an object is relatively close away, about eight feet right here. Real tight shot. There's some detail in the mini DV format, as you can see. How funny is this? Do you remember the old Sony memory sticks? And wow, this is eight megabytes. No, not eight gigabytes, eight megabytes. If you can find a memory stick player to put in your computer, you might be able to get, well, maybe a half of a photograph on there. Speaking of photos, there actually is a photo button on the camera if for some reason you wanted to use this to take pictures, which is probably not that advisable. But by pressing that button, you will get a few seconds of a still frame on your tape, or if you're using the memory stick, on the memory stick. The camera picks up good sound even when you're narrating, thanks to its large mic right on top. The playback controls are lit up nice, so in a dark room you can see them. And the screen is small, but definitely does the trick. Flap down doors, you've got all your video outputs, including an S-Video out. And another door reveals the headphone out and the Lank out, which is used to ex connect accessories like this wired remote control, which came with the unit, if you don't want to use the wireless remote control. Inside the door, you have some professional and unprofessional features like zebras, which are professional, and the digital and picture effects, which, well, let's take a look. Black and white. The, uh, negative, oh no. So the black and white cat becomes white and black. That's interesting. So that might really make this camera worth it, that I could do, make my cat the actual reverse. If I can do that with a personality, to make it a nice cat, that would be great. I'll call Sony on this. This is Luminance. How silly is that? I don't know. Okay. That's interesting. If you ever want to use a Grand Theft Auto drunken effect, this trail oh, effect would be your, your, your selection. Cool. Does it look like an old movie? No, I'm not sure. And let's try one more. Flash. So the cat looks like it's at a disco. And we can try one more. And that's the still. It's another way of accessing a still. Let's try it one more time. Whiskers! Okay. Being that this is a mini DV digital camera, and a lot of people don't realize that even though it records to tape, it's still digital. There is a digital firewire port, which was also called IEEE 1394. That was the protocol. So you can connect a firewire cable from this camera to any other firewire recorder, like this deck I have here, and make a perfect copy of the tape without any generational loss. So this was one of the last great cameras in the mini DV format. As a matter of fact, it was one of the last great cameras in the standard definition format, because shortly thereafter, high definition was gonna come into play. And did you know that high definition first for camcorder technology was still on tape? It wasn't using SD cards or files. And stay tuned for some upcoming videos about that. That's called the HDV format. Subscribe to this channel and you'll get all the latest about tech to remember. Let me know in the comments section what you think about the VX2100. Please subscribe, please like, I do answer comments, and I will see you in the next video.